Hunter x Hunter, episode 36. Hisoka just got rocked. Oh, <laughs> okay. Again! One swing just wasn't enough. A big dead X and X a small kick. And what a huge spiritual victory at the cost of his life. We have completed Rocky 1. <laughs> How do they animate his face so well to just capture that feeling? Yeah, I mean... You shut up. <laughs> In this dirty-ass world, you know the referees take bribes, too. Who are you? Why did you just appear in all your beauty? Thank you, Sephiroth spirit. See the next villain? Run! <laughs> Run before you get schwinged! That's a different expression. Oh, oh! That's the gun that I know and love. Don't get too close to him. Especially at that height. <laughs> wow, he carried it into the match. Gone members. I bet Hisoka does too. This kid, man, he's such a badass. He knows. He knows. He loves it a little bit too much. I can move water. Honest. <laughs> Very honest. Oh god. Hisoka's terrifying this continues. Did you now? This just gets deeper and deeper with every episode. <laughs> That's great. Very interesting. Very interesting. I guess that makes me a manipulator. I want to say specialist just because it sounds cool. But yeah, manipulator. How far is manipulator away from a specialist? I gotta look at this tree again. I'm genuinely curious. This is my new horoscope. Move over MBTI. Oh, manipulation and specialization are adjacent. Man really is just gonna turn out to be life. It's just gonna be a model for life. It just gets better and better. And the more I think about it, the more my mind goes wild with possibilities. Not to say it will go this way, but just imagining ways it could go. Because it's a circle, there might be a point in the center that's like the heart of Hatsu. Oh yeah, and enhancer and transmuter are adjacent to his point about compatibility. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like Soka really hops around in terms of his interests and loyalties. Uh-oh. He's been waiting for this for so long. He literally stood under trees, feeling it. Wow, he made that look so effortless compared to Gon. He like did what Gon did, but with air. Still though, maybe it's just a hope. Isn't there part of Ahsoka that doesn't want to kill Gon because of how fun it is? Or is the killing the like the peak? There's another word I was going to use, but I don't want to use Ahsoka's language. What's the game plan? Gon, for me, I feel like his best chance is surviving until Ahsoka wins by points. At least there's like a, a limit or an end that isn't just Gon, because Gon will just fight to the death. But let me not count out Gon completely. I think you may be concussed. Honestly, even that's impressive. I'm going to use my my skills, which have both the properties of rubber and gum. Yes. Get over here. But gum and rubber. I'm glad I learned Nan so I could see this attack. Elastic love. Okay, doing something very simple, extremely well. If Gon wasn't the main character, I would be thoroughly convinced of his death. And he's still attached. Like gum. <laughs> I like how... <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're getting a lot of these details a lot. 
I mean, he's legit scoring. My little puppet. We don't want those though. Oh, is it like a long time ago? Oh my god. This gets worse and worse. Might have been when I stepped into the ring. Option four in the spirit of the show. Oh! Man. See, if I guess that same answer every time, I'll get it right eventually. Oh yeah, well, like, we saw it. <laughs> Whoops. Kalua did tell you. Wow, our ego is deflating. All the glory of that punch. Right, right. Yeah, ego deflation. Imagine getting taught, being helped by the person you hate the most. Total domination. I feel like in a way that just sorted out Gon's priorities. What I was just saying about spiritual domination was a very real possibility in that moment, and it may still be the case. But what seems to have won out, what's more important to Gon is Nen knowledge. He's like, yeah, that's a good point. That's the better side of Gon, the higher side, not whatever the other thing is that is basically a death wish. Not the spitefulness, the bitterness, the I must die on every hill that challenges my sense of self-worth. That's basically the Hisoka experience. He could still attach his bungee gum. Right. Wow, Hisoka's ability is so expansive. Like some kind of bungee gum. Just plunge in. <laughs> this is so terrible and so great at the same time. Oh no. Gotta give credit to the voice actor though. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so awful. Imagine recording this. Soka has a lot of self restraint, all things considered. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Not quite there yet. Then you can like boomerang him right back. Oh, there it is. And this could this could be an infinite hit combo. Don't admit it. That's honest. That's awesome. Yeah, speaking of like the higher thing, again, that's 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 it. It's not the beating Hisoka. It's Gon rising. Hisoka is a stand-in for a challenge, but the challenge is internal. <laughs> Gon arguing with the refs. <laughs> the fact that Gon is still dead set on winning this match. Why did you listen to him? And it's the best thing that could happen to you. Though Gon is not going to feel that way. Everyone else is going to be super proud though. Yeah, that's my reaction. And here's another free lesson. That you didn't want. Or that you did want. For Gon, like, being frustrated about anything not earned on his own, he's, like, forever linked to Ahsoka and Ahsoka's advice and experience, like some kind of sticky gum. Ahsoka's bored now, he may just leave. He's a fickle man. If I remember, <laughs> I may move on to another target or occupation or whatever. I'm Ahsoka and I do what I want. Good. That's, yeah, that's kind of what I was saying last episode. Yes, this feels good. Yeah, yeah. We have a very, very clear thing to work on. We're out of the range of realm of zero. We're in positive numbers. Now it's time to push it. I'm like relieved that was his takeaway. I mean, fair, fair. In real life, that also is the role of a referee. 
What? I have so much to say. There's so much that could be said. Okay. okay. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Feels a little bit like Gon is up on Kalua after this match. Not that it really matters. I mean, I think actually it might matter. I don't really know how the relationship will play out. It's just I have a constant fear that's been somewhat diminished over time as I see more of Kalua and like his sweet nature and how much he supports Gon. Nevertheless, that there's a little bit of like that rivalry edge, the competitiveness. Kalua is not the type to want to be like a Krillin to Gon's Goku. You know what I mean? That speculative comment aside, this feels like massive growth for Gon. I think the whole Nen thing has helped him zone in on something way more important than whatever was fueling him before. And like I've always said, I'm like, I'm never going to judge an imperfect motivation because at least it's motivation. And like the actual pure, real best goal is, is obscured. It's so hard to find. You just go like in the best direction, you know how, and you figure out the direction more accurately as you go. That seems to be the case for Gon. He hit upon something that is really, really well suited for him. It is like perfectly aligned for his own growth. And like finding that the competitiveness, the proving yourself, the kind of ego chip on your shoulder driven nature of it gets a little bit muted because it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's it's like a just a way to find meaning and value in like a void or absence of meaning and value. It's so kind of like in all his craziness and creepiness and swinging ends up being one of Gon's most important teachers. I want to emphasize how cool that is to me because it's so rare, but I think it's right. I mean, like every enemy in terms of daily life, let's say, or normal life for most people, the things or people that trigger us that we have like true emotional resentment for, people who like solidly hand us our asses in categories that we actually care about. That's where the pain comes from, right? Like if people beat us things we don't care about, there's no pain. Almost always the reaction will be not gone. It will be like deeper resentment and hatred, a lot of mental energy and legwork trying to rewrite what just happened, why you're really the victor even though deep down it's unsatisfying because you know you lost. Disappearing from the game entirely rather than like the thrill of the fact that, wow, this thing actually just pointed to something really important for me. There's something here. There's something inside of this that is critical. And it's never going to go away until I look it dead in the face and do what I have to do, which will be hard and require work. If only that thing could be like a joyous pursuit or, or one that is seen as like a gift or a privilege, like thank you to whoever for revealing part of my destiny to me. Thank you to whatever this thing was that was like deeply unsettling despite the pain. Thank you for these trials and tribulations for revealing the adventure. What goes a long way for Gon is that Nen is kind of a very clear thing. In real life, it's not always that clear because Nen is life, right? Nen is you. It's a person, it's humanity. And the way we experience it, that's a lot less clear than like, let's do a water divination test and find out that we're an enhancer and that we got to like manipulate objects or whatever. To bring this full circle actually to my, my first point about Kahlua, would Kahlua Kalua do that? Would Kalua see that as a thrill? Would he be able to like hit that streamline as, as easily as Gon? Or would it be in some ways a threat to a lot of the stuff he's built up over his life? I have a lot of faith in Kalua. I think he's a great kid and will like persevere through that. But just my gut feeling is that it'll it'll be a little bit harder for him. I know I'm going way off the rails here, but actually that resentment I'm, I'm referring to that ends up being the driving force and the gift might even come from Gon. <laughs> Respect for Zushi as well. Yeah, that's also Zushi, right? Gon is Zushi's Hisoka. <laughs> I hope Zushi comes back and just destroys. I hope I eat all of my words. <laughs> that says a lot that like, Hisoka left, so they left. Oh, my little Zushi. I love him despite all the jokes. No, is this arc really over? I don't want it to end. Last episode, I had this whole like long speech about finding your edge. What is optimal for you won't be based necessarily on what is like the default package. It's a great place to start. Like we're lucky we have the default package as a, a baseline that we can feel confident in and build enough towards so that we're secure to explore our edges or explore what we really are. But it's not the final highest thing for any individual. What's so cool though about Nen is that it is explicitly stated that Nen is like becoming what you are the most. And so Zushi's path is not at all incompatible with what he's already doing. The only risk is that he doesn't adjust his, his focus and studies to fit exactly what he actually is. To have a more adaptive, fluid sense of self, especially early on, until you find exactly what those lines are for, for yourself. And it's tricky, right? There's danger on both sides because you don't want to like be exploring forever. In just so many things, the perfect is the enemy, the good, right? But you also don't want to stop exploring. And, and actually, in some cases, success can be a detriment. Like if you hit an adequate level of success, let's say, bizarrely, sometimes that's a trap. <laughs> Might sound bleak, but like here's your potential, right? And you're climbing towards your potential, but here you find something that feels pretty good. You know, it's like 
solid and that's great and maybe that's enough even but like there's still this gap what if you had continued through the discomfort a little bit more you know who knows what you would have discovered did we ever and we didn't even die oh no more letters from gon huh has it been that long oh she's gonna be thrilled oh we weren't invited, but I know it's okay. I'm not ready. It was so much fun. <laughs> it's hilarious because I remember when this arc started, I was like, well, this will be a couple episodes. Give me back uh, Leorio and Kurapika. But now I don't want it to end. Awesome. Hell yeah, that was great. That's about as great of an ending for an arc as I, I could have hoped for. Like we had a clear goal and like we didn't achieve what you might consider or you, some people would argue is the highest condition for victory, which is like killing Hisoka or whatever. But like really getting into the heart of what's important for Gon and being like realistic to his level of development and the beauty of his outlook, being able to see that and walk away from it. It's like the perfect like level up in his story. I guess the icing on the cake is that presumably we get to see Leorio and Kurapika again. And also that Hisoka is still a thing. He's still around. I mean, who knows how far this will go. Sorry that you were still unripe fruit. Oh! Okay, wow, we're really going back to the basics, huh? Really? Uh, was that sarcasm? I feel like his expressions are actually like perfectly drawn. Gon's expressions range from I'm gonna risk my life to save my friends to I'm gonna risk my life to win this challenge to I'm gonna risk my life to prove this to myself to I'm gonna risk getting schwinged to beat Hisoka. So I guess that's the end of this arc. The same day I post the ending of the first arc on YouTube, making both of the arc ending episodes Christmas specials, technically. I don't know exactly at what point I got hooked, but I know I'm hooked now. It was this arc. The first arc was really fun. And like, I'm sure the more I watched, the more I'll continue to recognize even more why it's so critical to the show. But Nan just added so, so much to this show. Hisoka being expanded on also great. Hisoka, like this very unique, awesome category of villains in my mind. I, I can't really think of any equivalents in the weird, awesome role he fills. Also, I think I just like the kids more. It's really nice and inspiring to see that they're growing. They're not these fixed bundles of whatever they are. They like ping pong off each other sideways, but upwards, just so much fun. Wing lurking and accidental creepiness aside ended up being a really great figure for this arc as a teacher, Zushi being a great counterpoint. And then much to my relief, cause as you guys know, I'm often wary of power systems cause of the difficulty they pose for me, especially when it's hard for me to like connect with it or find a connection to it. Ends up being very, very connected and great in the sense that it's not just power. It's not like word jumbo. There's actually heart and depth behind it. Can't wait to continue their journey and also also can't wait to see Leorio and Kurapika's reaction to seeing how the kids have changed. I feel like that's really going to emphasize it.